guys, Ron Nitrakoulis here, RK3 Designs. I have a lot of people that are wanting to redo a house. They don't have the ability to build another countertop. So I think what I'm gonna try to do today is show y'all some options. And they're pretty fun options, and they're pretty easy, actually. I have a integrated sink, uh, integrating meaning that the sink and the backsplash is all one piece. So that kind of brings up some issues when you're pouring a design because your design is gonna wanna really run down uh, in your sink area and you're gonna lose whatever pattern. Same thing on your backsplash. But we're gonna do something a little different. So what I've done so far is I've taken the uh, sink and I buffed it, actually I took the grinder because it was pretty bad. And then I primed it, I cleaned it really well first uh, and I primed it with a bonding primer. And the bonding primer that I really like to use is uh, XIM and it is the, uh, it's a modified uh, urethane. So it is washable by water, you can clean up with water. Um, that's what I like about it. But it says uh, that it's a bonder. You have to have a bonder because if it's not, that adhesion won't be there. So a regular kilt or um, you know an all-purpose type bonder is not what you need. My go-to is XIM, I love it. All right, so what we did is I put two coats of the XIM. I lightly sanded it in between and then I came over with my bare paint and primer in one with natural gray. So two coats of that, sand in between coats, and I am prepped and ready to go. There are um, all kind of patterns that you can use where you actually integrate this into your pattern. It's a little more difficult, and because obviously your uh, epoxy is gonna be running down and wanting to flow. So any kind of pattern that you want to stay as a distinct pattern is really hard to get on this. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in this little product. I got it off of Amazon. They are stickable backsplash tiles. Super lightweight, super fun to use. I've actually seen them used in houses and when the area is prepped correctly and these are put on correctly, they are fabulous. So also RVs, things like that because they're lightweight. So this is what we're thinking. I'm gonna come in and now all of this will be done after we pour because if I stick these to the backsplash now and then I pour, that epoxy is gonna stick along this bottom and then I won't be able to get it off. Now, if you never plan on taking this off, uh, then go ahead. This will be obviously the easiest way to do it is to apply your stickers first. Um, but this is what we're gonna do. After we pour our finish, I'm gonna come back and I'll apply the stickers. Now there's two ways we can do the top of the backsplash. One is, we, I'm gonna scoot this over so you guys can see. One is we can stop at four inches, cut that, and then we will have this area here, which you could paint the same color as your wall. Uh, that's one option. The other option, is to come over here, bend this down, cut here now, because when it bends over, it'll fold over and now that's gonna go on top of that space. Even if you have a little space left, that's okay because you're gonna have to come back and put silicone on that and seal it anyway. So two ways to do it. Personally, I like to come up here, cut it at the four inch mark, that way we're level here and, and then just run your paint to match the wall so all of this kind of blends in together. That would be my choice. So, fun stuff. Look on Amazon. They have hundreds of different kinds of patterns on these. So the actual pattern we're gonna do. Now, this is gonna be an experiment because I'm not done this one. I actually had a lady email me and say that she wants, she loves the veins, knowing that she can't actually get those veins to stay like they are on this top to stay that way in the actual basin of the sink, 
I started thinking. So this is my inspiration piece. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna kind of combine this one finish into these veins, which we're gonna put across the surface. And then as that is starting to kind of set up, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do almost like a dirty pour on the inside of the sink, heat that so that it runs. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of embrace that running of the colors into the finish with the veins. I haven't done this, I haven't practiced this. This may be epic fail, but we're gonna try it and you're gonna watch me. I'm using colors a little different uh, this time, little different um, colors and brands. So I mixed up the majority, I would probably say a little over half of my material is mixed up with uh, a product by Just Resin. It is um, pearl white. I got this from Artist Till Death. They're one of their distributors. I highly suggest you go check their, uh, their website out. They have so many colors, it's amazing. So that's our white. Then I'm gonna come in with a product, uh, it's, it's from Bling It. And this is also a sparkling white. It's called Interference Oyster Satin. And um, so it kind of is gonna have like a two-tone look. Also from Artist Till Death, a little bit less than the first white, but almost equal amounts. And then I come in with a product I also got from Artist Till Death, uh, Color Obsessions. This is a powdered mica. The white was a gel. The white from Just Resin is a gel, love gels. And then the Interference uh, Bling It was also a powder. So this is uh, steel blue. And I used a very, very tiny amount of the steel blue. Like I literally just dipped the uh, tip of the popsicle and stick in there and then stirred it because I just wanted it to be a very hint. And even that little bit tinted this whole cup right here. Then I came in with just clear resin and I added Stone Coat Countertops, um, almost said fairy fart, <laughs> Stone Coat Countertops Diamond Dust. And um, so this is, this is my go-to. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And mixed, oh, about, I guess in comparison with the white, a very small amount, because I just want it to be an accent. I don't want it to take over my piece. We're just going to randomly lay this down. No particular order. Now I'm not worried about that product going down into the sink. That was the white just resin. Now I'm going in and it doesn't really make any difference what order you put this in. I just like to put what I have the most of down first. Then I kind of know where to fill in with my other colors. Now I do not want to get this on the backsplash. Remember, we're going to be using that uh, stick on tile for the backsplash. All right, so that was my bling, my interference oyster shell color. Here comes my steel blue, very, very lightly tinted steel blue. And then last but not least, diamond dust. And I'm just going in between the colors that I've already laid down. Now, some of you may want to stop at the next step and not go on with the veined patterns. And I would tell you guys, absolutely, because this is going to be a beautiful finish, especially if you're wanting a very quiet countertop next to the tile backsplash that, that I picked. So this might be for you. So you're getting two, two finishes in one actually today. Just today, only today, maybe tomorrow. That's what happens when I'm coffee deprived. All right, so now it's a little bit cool in my shop, but I'm actually using that to my advantage because as I'm running my th fingers through this, I'm getting a striated type of pattern. And that's what I'm going for today. So if you notice how I'm doing my 
how I'm pushing this all together, instead of running it like this, I'm just going back and forth. Now in the back, I do have to kind of run it up along this back edge. Okay, so, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. All right, so now I've got product that's going down into the sink. And all I'm gonna do is take this product and very, very thinly, I'm gonna rub it onto the surface. Now I know that this is gonna start setting up and that's kind of what I want because then when I come back in with the rest of my material, that's gonna be for just the sink basin. I'm hoping in theory that it's gonna kind of help it to keep that pattern a little more in place. Now I'm gonna to torch it a little bit and address my edges. Now know that when you torch, it's making your epoxy a lot more fluid. So you're gonna get more of the product running off the edge. Okay, so we did the edges and I just ran that uh, over the edge. Now, when we start adding our veins, you'll really see some of our edges really start to get character and pop. So I'm not in a hurry. I really kind of like my epoxy to kind of set up just a little bit before I start manipulating my veins because I have more control. If it's super fluid, everything's still moving and I lose control just a little bit. I don't like that. So I'm gonna let it sit probably 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then we're gonna start working on our veins. Okay, so we're back. It's been setting, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. This is an incredible finish on its own. Uh, you could even call this maybe a mother of pearl type of finish. I have striés in here with my hand that I did with my hand, and I like that. But if you wanted a real mother of pearl, soft, soft finish, this metallic can be made to be very soft and I'll show you how to do it. But this area right here is very soft. You don't see a real strie pattern and that is a gorgeous uh, pattern, especially for a bathroom. Okay, so if you wanted to take that hard strie type of pattern out, just take your gun and meld those colors together and then just leave it and it'll continue to run and it'll it'll run more in a uh, melded type of formation and it will absolutely be incredible. Okay, so now we're gonna start coming in with some type of pattern or vein. Now, when I look at this sink, I know that I'm gonna have a backsplash that's gonna be a little bit busy. So I don't want that vein to run right up next to the backsplash. I want it to kind of be a, have some separation there. Um, so we're gonna probably run this vein and I just have some smoke, um, smoke gray. I'm gonna spray it because I don't have a work area here to spray my paint first. I'm gonna just take it and spray it on this paper plate. And it's a pretty neutral gray, it's a uh, smoke gray. Now I can come in with my stick and I think I'm going to run the pattern. I don't want it to be right in the middle because that won't look really natural. But it's going to be a pretty good size vein. And I'll have it. Now I am putting this in a strie the way that I did my fingers when I laid it down. So the striés are all kind of going kind of catty corner. They're not going perfectly left and right. Okay, so I put this on a styrofoam plate and don't do that like a big dummy. I didn't realize that styrofoam is eaten up by the spray paint. So I'm just gonna be brave. I'm just gonna spray it straight on there. A little bit. I'm just trying to get an idea of where I want my color. Now this, I'm gonna have a little bare spot over here and I wanna, I wanna bring in some color there but I don't really want it to go all the way back up to that backsplash. Now I'm still not really worried about what's going down in my sink area because I'm gonna be adding color to that. 
And now I'm really not even putting any more color on my stick. I'm kind of picking it up and just barely depositing any color. All I'm doing right now is making a design. Just kind of seeing visually where my eye wants to go. All right. Okay, so I think I'm liking this. We can always add to it later. All right, now I'm gonna start building my vein. Uh, winter gray. I'm gonna use the same plates. I'll just have to go really fast. So winter gray, which is, has a blue tint to it, which really works with that steel gray mica that I used in my tinting of the resin. Now, you could definitely come in with just the blue on your stick, randomly add it in here, just to give you some visual. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back in with uh, some of my darker colors. This is a uh, anodized bronze. I'm gonna just put a little bit of that because I noticed my backsplash had just a little bit of this color in it. So I wanna pull a little bit of it out. Now it is a darker color. So depending on how transparent you want your veins to be and how, how much you really want them to have contrast will depend on how much of these colors that you bring into the veins. I love building veins. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like just kind of see them come to life. And when I take those colors, I'm not just setting them on top of the resin. Go ahead and get that stick down in there. Work that color down into the resin. You don't want it to just sit on top. I'm gonna come in now with, I want a little bit of a metallic. So I'm gonna add just a touch a dark steel metallic. Now rem remember, if you've never worked with metallic paints before, they have a tendency to want to set on top of your resin and not really get down into it, which is really pretty, but you just have to know how to uh, incorporate that into your design. Tiny bit. And you'll be surprised how that will work its way back up. You think that you really work it in well, and then you'll see it play picky-boo with you when you go and use your heat gun. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't want a ton of the sparkle. Just a little bit of that metallic. Also, when I'm doing my edges, I want that color to organically run down those edges so that it'll eventually be a really pretty edge. I do wanna make sure that I have epoxy on my edge so that the colors can run. There, all right. Now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of black. Black can take over so fast. So I'm gonna be very generous with this or conservative with this. Black is just almost a, I know it's kind of funny to say black is a highlight, but it's an accent. All right, so white is next. White can very easily overtake your vein. So we're gonna be easy on the white for right now. I like the color, so let's play with it a little bit with our heat gun, see where it goes, and we can always add some more color. And guys, I use the cheapest heat gun. I've had so many text, emails, Facebook posts. What fancy heat gun do I use? This is it, $9.99 at Harbor Freight in their tent cell. I have 30 of these. And some of them I've had since our very first classes that we've done, and they're still rocking on. So I really like them. You can have a high and a low, that's about it. Now, because I've let my epoxy start to kind of set up, it's exactly where I want it to be because I want to be able to control this epoxy and how much it runs. So because it's starting to really set up, I can move just certain parts of my vein, open up certain parts without worrying about it really getting out of hand. 
I love that transparency that I got from mixing up the diamond dust in the clear. Almost an onyx effect because you can see through it. Now I am not worried at all about this color running down because we're gonna use that in our design. I like to open up that color. See how you can really open up that vein? Open up those colors. And it looks more like a big old slab of rock has been cut into. On my edges, I wanna fade them out so that I don't have any straight lines on my edges. Stone Coat countertop products have so much open time. And like I said, it's probably maybe right at 70 degrees in my shop right now. And this has been out of the bucket probably a good 30, maybe 40 minutes. And I still have plenty of open time on this project. I'm gonna open this piece up. Now this looks incredible. This does look like a chunk of rock here. Now, I'm also gonna soften the areas here that still had the metallic was still picking up my striated, I guess, marks that I put in. I have decided as we're going, I wanna soften those lines. These metallics are incredible to work with. So I highly suggest you guys, if you haven't looked at Erica and Jeff's website, Artist Till Death, that you go check it out because they have some fun products. All right, so I'm really liking the softness that I'm getting. I think I'm gonna call it quits on my veins. I really like that. I know they're still gonna keep running a certain amount, especially down in my basin, but I'm fixing to go mix up some more product and we're gonna start incorporating those colors now into that product. We're back. And I told you guys at the first of this video that I've never done this one particular pattern with the idea that's in the back of my brain. So y'all are learning as I'm learning and I'm really loving how these veins are starting to kind of slide down inside of the basin. So I'm gonna kind of have a change of heart a little bit. I was gonna do a dirty pour inside there, inside the basin. And as that dirty pour ran down in my brain, it was all gonna be kind of cohesive. But I'm thinking I'm changing my mind. So what I did is I mixed up some more of the uh, Just Resin White Gel and the Bling It Powdered uh, Interference Oyster. I think I'm gonna take these now and I'm gonna very strategically pour this around the rim, very careful not to mess up where my veins have already started to drip down. So I'm gonna come here with that. Then I'm gonna come in with the interference and I'm just gonna go back on top of that. I'm gonna let gravity be my friend in this particular pour. Now, if you do a dirty pour, you wanna calculate about 30% more product being used when you do that sort of finish. So, cause it's terrible to get halfway through your, uh, your dirty pour and you realize that you're not gonna have enough material. So rule of thumb, 30% dirty pour. So I don't know if the camera can catch this, but I'm getting a very, nice flow organically of that product. And that's what I'm looking for. We know this color coat is going to be a very thin coat inside of the basin. So what I would suggest doing is on the flood coat, I would flood coat my inner sink first. When that dries, I'd sand off the edges so that now it's smooth again. And then I would come back and flood coat the whole thing again. Now my basin has three coats 
of epoxy and therefore the durability is going to be a lot better. All right. I am so much loving this. And I really haven't touched it much. Right there had a little bit of surface tension. I'm letting this flow very organic so that it looks supernatural. And man, I'm really liking it. So I see one um, part of my sink, there's some surface tension. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the uh, leftover. I'm just gonna touch it. I don't want to, I don't wanna mess up the the flow of how it's flowing. So I'm just gonna touch it, add some material and help it, help it flow more organic. I'm making the decision of what part I want to move faster so I can use my torch, manipulate that resin and get it to move where I want it to move. Give a woman a torch and you empower her. I really, 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 really like this. I like how the colors from the veins are very slowly trickling down and given kind of an organic flow in there. It looks super natural. Now, if you did not want that, if you wanted it to be more, um, just a color, not so much flowing. You could wait, oh, probably 10 minutes or so, because you remember that's super thin in that basin. You could take your brush and you could chop all of that. Then you're not gonna have that, that flowing effect. I kind of like the flowing effect, so I'm actually not gonna do that. But do me a favor, if one of you do something like this and you do chop it, uh, tag me, post it so I can see that. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think I should chop it or do you think I should leave it alone? I'm really liking it, guys. I really, really am liking it. Also, uh, give me some feedback. Um, it, what you think about this backsplash? Uh, if you like the idea of coming in with uh, that stickers or... Would you prefer to see something where I took the background pattern, the whites and the pearls, brought it up here and actually let that run down and get the same look that you would get inside that basin? That is a huge option. Um, but for this video, I wanted to show you guys there are other uh, inexpensive products out there that you can use to make it all come together. And I not once tilted this or had to move it. So this is something that could very easily be done in a bathroom um, where you can't take the sink out. I love how this turned out. Um, what a fun project. So now I just wanna give you kind of a glimpse. I'm not gonna adhere these tile stickers until after I pour the flood coat, but I wanted you guys to get an idea of what it looks like. So I would come in here, line these up, there's a way you line these up. You have to have this, the backing off of them. But uh, look how pretty that turned out, especially like next to this actual vein. Isn't that pretty? I think that made a really pretty little design. After the flood coat, I'll come in here. I will peel these stickers off. I'll stick it on the background. I mean, on the back splash. I'll run a silicone bead and this little sucker's done. thumbs up if you like this video. I would love to hear some comments and uh, subscribe to our channel. Remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.